So the real challenge is not necessarily how to make sure you know everything that you could possibly encounter, because that is a, a fruitless endeavor, but it's rather how can you develop that ability to going from knowing little to nothing about something to being able to figure out how to hack into it. And when you can develop that skill set, that is when you're really going to succeed as a, as a pen tester or a red teamer. What to do when you get stuck on a CTF? Now, this was a question posed by one of our viewers, Sun Devil Thor, and uh, he had a really good point to one of my recent videos. I want to make sure that I really go in enough detail and really clear this one up because it can seem like I was saying like, hey, never look at walkthroughs no matter what. And um, in reality, things are rarely an absolute. So let me really address this niche kind of question, but it's probably going to apply to a lot of you guys watching right now. So if you watch this video, you might have had a similar question. What what they say is, I have the opposite problem when it comes to working on CTFs. I get stuck for weeks on simple ones due to something I've not yet learned and refuse to look at the walkthrough. Right now, I have a few CTFs that are unfinished in my list due to not having learned privilege escalation yet. So things are very rarely binary. That's something I really want to emphasize on this channel. A lot of times, you know, the answer is more complex than do this, don't do this, right? Because in reality, you know, if you are spending, uh, what did he say here? He's spending, you know, he has a lot on his list that are unfinished for weeks, right? If you are going weeks and not making any progress in terms of completing machines and stuff like that, let's say, right? Then it's absolutely in your benefit to look at a walkthrough at that point. I think that, or at least my experience, my perspective is that most people are probably having the opposite problem where they're too quick to look up hints and walkthroughs or ask for help on stuff, but there's absolutely a time and place to seek out help and to you know, get that nudge that you need. And what it's gonna allow you to do is get through a lot more boxes in a shorter amount of time while at the same time developing your methodology and your skill set if you if you do it in the right way. So what is what is the right way, you know? <laughs> That's the next natural question that you probably have. Well, you know, it, of course, like any good answer, it depends based on you, but what I will say is that what you're going to want to do is you want to be clear up front if you're having this problem, right? And not everyone has to do this. If you're not having this problem, then continue doing what works for you. But if this is something you're noticing, like where you're spending weeks on stuff and you're not making progress, that's not good either. So what I would give, the advice I would give for you or anyone else that is struggling with this is to get clear on how long you're going to spend trying to figure something out before you look at the the hint or the walkthrough. And that way you can make sure that you're challenging yourself, you're, you're pushing yourself just enough but at the same time, you're still going to keep making that forward progress. So I would encourage you to not make this time too short. Don't make it like an hour or, or two hours, or, unless you're on a really tight time crunch for whatever reason. If you have hardly any time, then, okay, I guess you're better off at least making some progress rather than not. Um, if you're a complete, complete beginner, you might want to make this shorter, right? You want to, maybe you want to do an hour if you're a complete, complete beginner. But if you're at like an intermediate level, you don't want to, you, you want to push yourself a little bit longer than that because here's the reality, right? If you want to go for OSCP, things like that, you're going to have to spend a lot more than an hour of struggling through stuff at a time. So you really want to start training yourself. And even if you're not going to go for the certifications, once you get turned loose on a, on a pen test, and, uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to have team members and stuff that can help you a bit, but for the most part, a lot of it's going to be you figuring things out on the fly. Maybe a lot of times you are, especially if you're a contractor or if you get hired on and you're new to the company, or if you just work for a really huge company like I do, you're going to encounter a lot of technologies, many of which are going to be new to you. So one thing he said as well in this question, right? He emphasized, you know, due to something that I have not yet learned, Okay, well, and, and he was talking about privilege escalation here. I understand that, but there's going to be a lot of technologies that you're going to encounter in these real world pen tests that you have not yet learned. And a huge part of the job is figuring out how to go from knowing very little to nothing about something and quickly being able to learn and apply it, at least learn just enough to get the job done. That's a huge part of it. 
you know, and the OSCP is a very good test of that as well because who knows what's going to be on the uh, the exam machine you get. There's a good chance that it could be running some technology or some kind of application you've never seen before that you know little to nothing about. And so the real challenge is not necessarily how to make sure you know everything that you could possibly encounter because that is a, a fruitless endeavor, but it's rather how can you develop that ability to going from knowing little to nothing about something to being able to figure out how to hack into it. And when you can develop that skill set, that is when you're really going to succeed as a, as a pen tester or a red teamer, right? Now, in regards to the privilege escalation part of it, I think the fact that you are challenging yourself to doing machines is like a, is a really good thing. And one piece of advice I could give you specifically for learning privilege escalation is develop a, a methodology. Have a set of checks that you're going to do every single time and stick to that, right? And, you know, resist the urge to just right away just run LinPs or something like that. Start running the manual enumeration as well, just to have a better understanding of what the tool is doing and what these actual attack vectors are. I think a lot of people overly rely on stuff like LinPs and stuff like that. And the main issue with that is that, you know, those scripts are extremely verbose. And what I've found as I've developed as a pen tester is that a lot of times I'm able to find the privilege escalation vector before I even have to upload a script to the to the site, right? If you want to be a red teamer and you're looking for a privilege escalation vector, and then, you know, uploading a file to the target is like the last thing you want to do, right? It's bad OPSEC. So it's going to help for you to have an understanding of the underlying stuff that's happening and just live off the land a little bit, you know? I mean, I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what your goals are ultimately with this, but it can only benefit you to understand the manual side. And, uh, but what I would say as well is when you do find the vector and you are able to escalate your privileges and become root, run that script every single time. So if you're, if you like linpeas, run linpeas every time, maybe even run multiple ones, right? Run like linenum.sh or whatever, or on windows, run multiple windows scripts, just so you can get a, a feel for seeing what the output looks like. Cause a lot of privilege escalation is having a very solid understanding of what is the base case. And that way, if, if you know that very well, then when you see something that's out of the ordinary, it's going to jump out at you like, okay, this is non-standard. This is not normally how this is configured, or this is not normally an application that is, you know, pre-installed on the, on the system. And that can give you a huge hint that, hey, this is something I probably want to look into. But you're not going to know that if you don't run the, the scripts enough and you're not as well-versed in looking at the output of them. So don't rush into using them, but after you figure out a machine or after you've done sufficient enumeration, run that script and make sure you run it every time just to get a feel for it, just to get a feel for what how things should look. Even run it on your own system and see what does it come back with, right? And just getting more exposure and experience to that is gonna help you learn privilege escalation. If you're completely new to it, then I would just check out like Try Hack Me or some of the um, blog posts, the numerous ones you can find online or some videos and stuff like that, and just start chipping away at it. Um, I've done, I think I've done quite a few videos on it as well. You could probably search up privilege escalation within my channel and uh, find some videos on that as well. But yeah, just keep at it. And you know, while you're at it, go ahead and check out the uh, the top 10 interview questions. I don't know if you have already, um, Sun Double Thor. And I think that'll help you a lot once you're, once you're ready for, uh, for jobs, right? If you're already doing CTFs, let me just tell you, you're pretty far along, man. Not many people are even at a stage where they can attempt that yet. So yeah, definitely arm yourself with those, with that, some interview prep, and you're going to be surprised how soon you're going to be ready for, for that. So yeah, but if you guys are ready for some more technical content though, as well, I'll put that on the screen for you right now. And I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.